So I'm right here at Steve Phillips' house, who is a uh, legend in the relics and uh, identifying pieces and things like that. And he's actually going to be the one who's going to diffuse the shell for us. I'm here with Steve Phillips, who is a relic legend. Um, he's diffused over 2,000 cannonballs. And today, we are diffusing this artillery shell that I found about a week ago. It's a week later. and um, I, It was such an excitement to be able to you know, unearth this brilliant piece of history. He was showing me a little while ago about some of the fuses that they had, and zinc fuses, and um, percussion fuses, and we're setting this up so that we can drill through it, and so that we can actually diffuse the projectile so that it won't be, you know, dangerous to have in the collection, and then we're going to preserve it by um, doing some other methods such as electrolysis. People think uh, that if they drill one underwater, it can't blow up. That's not true. Uh, they can blow up the people who got killed drill. They would drill them underwater yeah. with their hand. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to squirt a little water on it, just sort of washing it off. But mm -hmm. actually, you just have to think it might blow up. Yeah. So we're going to be up in uh, at a house. good way yeah. from here. We drill through the uh, fuse holder now, and uh, we're into the powder. Oh yeah! So now what we're doing is getting the black powder out. See a lot. It's coming. Look at that. It won't all come out the first time. <laughs> has stainless on the bottom too. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be touching the bottom. We're going to hold it off the bottom with something. Let's see if this will do it. Current's going to flow like that. It's going to go all the way around. And pretty soon now we ought to, after we turn it on, we'll start seeing bubbles. Bubbles should come all the way around. Something like this you run at about one amp, maybe one and a half. Okay, we've been running this for one day, and uh, it's, as you can see, it's foamed up, and now I'm going to disconnect it, connect that here. You can see how it's sloughing off and just falling off. I'll take a, it'll come real clean, real easy now, might take just a little bit of tapping. Falls off in hunks. It'll take a little, little scraping, a little bit of cleaning up, but not much. Mostly, it just falls off. It, it can stand to, to run a little bit more, and I think I am going to run a little bit more. We just we just got here and there's there it is right there folks. It turned out real good. It did. Savage missing. It's cold. It yeah. is. Wow. This is not was not a percussion fuse. It took a paper time fuse. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, I preserved I well unloaded it and cleaned it with reverse electrolysis and then we uh, 
used a tannic acid based uh, product called Rimplers, uh, Gimplers Rust Converter and I preserved it on the inside and I preserved it a couple coats on the outside. But I'm retired, I got plenty of time, so if anybody finds anything, give me a call. 205-672-9310. Awesome. And I'll help you. And I preserved a lot of them for museums. I preserved the ones that are at the Atlanta History Center, who were Tom Dickey's. And I've unloaded and preserved over 2,000. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.